This is, I think, the first Narciss Bomber that I made for bro. Um, this is a fucking tank top <laughs> that I found. Um, these are my own pants, I'm saying. Um, these are Target socks, and then I got these Balenciaga slides. Yeah, little, little um, uniform type shit, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I just wanna be on my uniform shit, I don't even wanna be like, Fact, I'm on uniform shit too. Like, we're on uniform time right now, This man. tank top I made this. <laughs> this life is worth Wearing tank your own top. shit too, man. Make yeah, your own like, shit. I haven't printed on it yet. Just a blank that I made. Damn, I made this. Chrome heart braces. Um, these Rick pants I got in Japan. And some Balenciaga boots I got in Japan too. People think they have to wear certain things to like feel cool. You just got to be cool. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm gonna say, because you could wear anything, and if you're cool, you're cool, and that's just gonna be cool too. You know what I'm saying? I could wear anything right now and still feel good. Like, I'm about to model this women's brand like, next week. Wear okay. some zesty ass shit, but it's cool though, because I'm gonna feel good in that shit, and nobody can tell me shit. So, don't worry about, like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, I'm wearing brands you know, that I fuck with. Wear brands too, but not everything gotta be just like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my styling tip, like... He's really the stylist. He gonna know. I, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? He gonna know. Bro, the only thing, like, that matters when it comes to getting dressed is if you're comfortable. That's it, bro. Because if you're not comfortable, those clothes will wear you out. And people are gonna know that you're trying hard. People are trying, gonna know that you're trying to fit in. Like, you see us, like, this guy, he made this bomber. Like, he made these pants. He's wearing a fucking target wife beater like but he's comfortable <laughs> that's why that shit looks fly because he's wearing that shit like you couldn't if you look at these like maybe the boots you could be like oh i know those boots are balenciaga like cool but she like i know those pants like are red. you don't know you could look but at this top that shit on though and then he looked fly <laughs> but it's because like we're comfortable in it like this shit like we're wearing the clothes they're not wearing us when it comes to styling bro and when it comes to getting dressed like all that matters is that you're comfortable like he said we could put anything on it could be any color crazy some whole neck shit we could go to the thrift store we could go to fucking we could go to like hello kitty world and get some drip there and if we're comfortable in it that shit's gonna look fire because all that matters is that you're comfortable i like trolling too sometimes sometimes i just like trolling i don't, I don't even know how to explain it like i'm just be like i just be trying to push it see what i can get away with you know what i'm saying no bad you know you be wearing uggs I be wearing uggs man i'll be wearing like outside in the club uggs <laughs> That's hard. But he's comfortable. That shit looks fine. People going to be yeah, like, I'm fucking with the Uggs, though. They're going to be like, damn, I didn't even know, bro. Be wearing Uggs ever. Yeah, I am. If it's cool and I like it, I'm going to wear it. That's you did too, man. Mitch Modes. Locked in with the gang. Watching Montreality. Shout out to them. What's up? It's Joy. Shout out to Montreality, man. thing at that time like because where i'm from is uh like outside of dc in northern virginia and um it's not a lot to do out there and there's not a lot of like real culture and i think 10 years old is like what grade was i in at 10 years old what grade? that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking what think grade like is that fourth, fourth grade? Like fifth. fifth nah yeah, yeah, yeah. like fourth fifth grade yeah that was like so for me that's like lime wire runescape like Damn. um uh like aim like shit like that that was like my real introduction to internet in general and um i think that's really how i found a lane into creativity just overall like um especially through limewire because that was just like that was right before myspace came out that was like zanga too i don't know if y'all remember zanga Zanga was like the it was like MySpace before MySpace where you could have your own little profile page. So I was fucking with Zanga, um, but it wasn't a lot to do. Like I could, there was no city for me to go out and explore. There was I was in like a real rural area, so I'm just riding dirt bikes with my friends and like you know just going oh, through crazy. going through the internet like FunnyJunk.com, Ebombs World, like 
yeah all that shit that was like where I was at at 10 years old was really just like diving into the internet damn I don't even know about LimeWire like I know <laughs> what LimeWire is but I don't like all you just said I don't know anything about that yo that was a crazy experience yeah bro. no I'm 25 so I mean that's when like Crank That when I was like 10 I think Crank That was out and just like yeah and like iPod Touch came out it was on iFunny just like I don't even I don't even know what I was thinking I don't know I was very like blind to like a lot of shit like I was just always in my own little world like I was making like stop animation videos and like just you know yeah crank that man that shit was hard crank that what else uh, he had a little mixtape Ya Trick Ya oh my god you taking it back right I now. remember playing that shit okay. in my class she let me put it on for like 30 seconds yeah, and just the all. media was like turn this shit off um <laughs> yeah no 10 10 10 was cool i fought with that i remember what i was thinking about i remember Oops. thinking of, i know exactly where i was at in my room thinking what i would look like when i was like 20 and hey yo <laughs> i was so far off man i was so <laughs> far off it was not like this it was not like this but honestly Thinking about my 19 year old self and like, oh, he would be, oh, he'd be so fucking proud right now. Like, facts. Like, he would, he would be like running around, like tweaking, like, this is fucking lit. Like, bro, my 19 year old self would be in my DMs every day. day like, yo, you got something. it, bro. bro. Like, you yes, got it. Bro. Yo, shout out to you, bro. For real. But shout out to my old self, for real. though. Facts. I am who I am because of him. And I do think about him a lot, like, Jamba Juice days and, just them days where I was just in my room just all you could do is think that's all that's the only move I could make was thinking and like and that shit what is it manifestation mm -hmm. that, that's what it is yeah I was manifesting all this shit anything I wanted to do I, I did it you know and I had to make new goals at a certain point because I did pretty much everything there was not like low expectations but like my goals were so like at that time, we're so high. Mm -hmm. Looking back now, I was just like, damn, like, I don't even really know if I really fucked with myself, like, because <laughs> these but goals... But it just seems so, like, yeah. far out. It's and, not, though. But you now there's new goals. That's like, goes back to just what we were talking about, about, like, keeping your imagination. Like, once you reach those goals, and it's not in the sense of, like, oh, this isn't enough, because, like, where we got to now, it's like, I'm very grateful, very blessed, and very just... I don't take this shit for granted at yeah, all. Yeah, I'm very relieved if this that shit we ended got to tomorrow. This point. I'd, I'd just like you know, thankful every day. Yeah, you gotta keep not your gratitude. Forget them days. Don't ever forget them days. Hell no. I remember them days. But it, it's people that, especially in this game, <clears throat> like, shit is just not enough. Like it's people that have so much more than than I have, and I just mean like on a material level, and um, not even just that too. Like it's people I know that have, you know, families and wives and. They got cars and houses and yeah. just like they they got it made so to speak but i think part of them they they still just aren't fulfilled and i think that's just the saddest part because it's like you could have you could have the world and then you're still not happy if you're not you know right within yourself i feel like we're not fulfilled but in a way just a little you know what i'm saying like never be like content or anything exactly like there's but, fulfillment in what we're doing and that's why we keep doing it but i feel like people they're always seeking out like i want this that he has and i want this that he has and but oh he's got more of this than me when it's like bro you're you like it's just about you and when it comes to like this is why i'm saying like you keep your imagination so that you can build these new accolades to reach so that when you get there like you're like, wow, I really did this. Mm -hmm. Like, and I really spoke this into existence. I really like led myself to this goal that I set for myself. And when you get there, you bask in that gratitude and you make sure that you know, like, I really did it. Like, I did this. And you, you feel good when you wake up. Yeah, like you, you feel good when you look in the mirror. Yeah, you like, know what I'm saying? you're just grateful. And, and then that, a, like just a life of gratitude is just gonna help attract more and more gratitude if you wake up and you're like damn i got reap all this what you sow, man like, fuck reap what you sow but i don't have this if you have that mentality of i don't have like you'll just attract more of what you don't have if you have a mentality of like this is who i am and this is what i'm worth 
then it's like that's what's going to come to you bar the thing is when something new comes out it's so pure and innocent and then once people figure out like how to like out like the algorithm and how to make money off of it it becomes very like corporate and that's my whole thing is like anti-corporate you know what i'm saying like i don't want to be like a poster like you know like a poster child or like just like i just want to be like not even underground but just like if you know you know type shit you know and i mean right now just how things are going like everybody knows kind of what to do like the formula and the structure like labels know it you know what i'm saying you don't even gotta have a little talent to just like get streams or you could just you know what i'm you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but that shit is not special anymore. We were just talking about that the other day, like, even just Instagram itself, like, the Instagram we came up on is just, like, the essence of that just feels so oversaturated and just watered down, like, because it's just, it's just so much of a cycle of the same shit going on, like, it's just a vicious cycle of the same thing, instead of, like, there was gatekeeping, man. Yeah, and like that's when why we came like, up. There was gatekeeping. Yeah, man. and that shit like people be hating on gatekeeping, but it works because it 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 forces people to like do their own thing. If you let let the floodgates open, like man, people are just gonna be like, "Bet this is what we on. This is what they on. This is what we on." Like back then, you could not get away with like ripping somebody's shit uh, or like jacking a style. Like uh, it's gonna be known throughout the whole community. Like yeah, no, boom, right there. That came from that. It was so small that you could do shit like that. Yeah. It's so big now, it's just like, it just gets lost. And honestly, nobody really cares, you know? Like, I'd be not even ripping shit. I'd be taking inspiration from stuff, but it works because it's like my own personal shit. Like, I've been on this shit. Anything that I've ever ripped or like used as inspiration, like, is from my, my childhood and some shit like that. So it's like, it's deeper, you know? And if I do, it's not. It's from like some old shit, you know? Like I'm not ripping anything that a kid's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not supposed to rip from like someone in the community. You're supposed to take your own shit that, you know, like. Yeah, like deep cuts. But like, and when not even both of us, like if we take inspiration, like we're not ripping our inspiration. Like we're getting inspired and then flipping it our own way and doing our own thing with it. Putting our own like pain and past and, and story into it and make, making it make it's sense technically as original. to why that shit inspired us like people are just like on copy and paste mode right now and I think that's what's really oh, fucking oh that's working up. I need to do that yes, you know what I'm saying uh, it's like I get it I've been there but even when I was there I still knew just like hey you just don't take stuff from people in the community you know Favorite cartoon character of all time is probably Invader Zim or like Zim, just because he was on a mission, bro. Like you couldn't stop, bro. He was finesse god. You know what I'm saying? I don't think bro ever got caught. Yeah, he had that one kid who was just on his ass, but he was finesse god. I fuck with Zim. Yeah, um, this might be cliche, but my <laughs> favorite, my favorite cartoon character, a hundred thousand percent SpongeBob, bro. I'll tell you I was gonna why. Say, I was, if it wasn't that, it was that. I'll tell you why SpongeBob, bro. Because he don't let nothing fucking phase him, bro. He got angry ass Squidward. That he don't let him fuck up his mood. You got creepy ass, ass boss. Yeah, creepy, fucking <laughs> creepy old ass Mr. Krabs. Cheap as shit, greedy motherfucker. He don't even let that phase him, bro. This guy walks out the door with a smile on his face every single day, no matter how dumb. We ain't got how, Sandy not giving him no yeah, cheeks. No, like, <laughs> I'm like, what? How dumb Patrick is, bro. He don't even care, bro. You just leave the crib, smile on his face, go home, smile on his face. Doesn't matter, bro. Nothing can phase that. The guy, energy, bro. man. That's my favorite cartoon character. He gave me hope. He is, too. Like, just such a positive outlook on life. Like, no matter what happens. Because that just goes back to what I'm saying. Like, he knows that no matter what happens, it's, it's going to be the past at some point. So even if you're in the worst part of your <laughs> of your life right now, <laughs> like, man. that shit's going to be the past tomorrow. It's not the SpongeBob, so man. Not SpongeBob, Season bro. one, two, three, and a little bit of four. The only valid ones, bro. Give me an episode, like a moment. SB219, man. SB219 clubs, Club uh, Squidward. All right, I know what episode that is. That's season... Uh, season three, episode twelve. Um, I don't know them like that, bro. 
Bro, I blessed this girl one time. I went over to her crib with a whole every season in a box. You I left that it shit. There? I know. Wow. Fucking tweet. First of all, she didn't even have a DVD player. Hell, bro. Wow. Like, all right. I need to get that back. Nickelodeon versus Disney Channel versus Cartoon Network. <sighs> Ooh. Nickelodeon. I know a lot of people are going to be like, what the fuck? But Cartoon Network to me was just like. Yeah, like, Cartoon Network got it now. And I think they had it once like, yeah. we got a little bit older. But when we were kids, Nickelodeon. Actually, you know what? I take that back. It was Cartoon Network because they had Boomerang. And Boomerang was that shit. Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, Johnny Thanks. Bravo. And now they got Adult Swim, which I respect. That shit is hard. Yeah, you know. Nickelodeon I just, don't got I it. I didn't like Adventure Time at all. I hated, I hated that shit. My boy Messiah is going to kill me for saying that. I know. Not, I know a lot of people can't. I understand. Sorry, Messiah, I get I it, you. though. I've, nah. I understand why Adventure Time is cool. But my thing. just like, I don't know, like SpongeBob and first From of all. Cat Dog? For, we exactly. About, bro. <laughs> cat Dog was hard. Back then, cartoons, they had like, not dirty jokes, but like, like subliminal subliminal messages, yes, right. and it and they weren't like For pertaining real. to a crowd. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think it is now. Like cartoons, they're always trying to like, okay, we got to have this, this, and this now because it's the time we live in. Just why can't we just have it be what it is? You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have that in there, but like, don't make you know. It just feels forced, like corporate shit. You know, like we gotta make these people happy when it's like we could just it's too talk. on the nose yeah it's like you know why don't you go first because i'm gonna keep i'm gonna talk about this for yeah yeah he really the video game guy now i lost that after <laughs> like high school i was done but I psp think for me like ps2 that was my thing oh yeah you're right ps2 was right. it for me because that was grand theft auto like and like i didn't have grand theft auto my best friend my brother had it I used to have to go over to his crib just to play it my mom wouldn't buy it for me i used to try to trick my grandmother into buying it for me and they always be like, you know that this game is rated M, right? And she'd be like, is your mom not buying that for you? Snitching. I'm like, nah, like, it's cool. She's snitching. She wasn't going for it. Shout out my grandma, but nah. I'm going to say best console was the PSP. Just because it was just so ahead of its time. Mm. And I got three right now in my crib. I got Xbox original, two Xbox 360s. I think Tony Hawk Pro, like, first of all, Tony Hawk. Shout out to Tony Hawk, bro. Like, that soundtrack, uh, any game, it doesn't matter which one it is, soundtrack put me on heavy. Heavy. Like, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, fucking uh, Motorhead. Like, I got a lot of music. I mean, I was like six, you know, knowing about, like, you know, just, yeah, shout out to Tony Hawk, bro. Project 8, Pro Skater 3. Everyone says Wasteland. Wasteland was cool, too. Pro like, Skater 3 had it. Pro Skater me. 3 fucking had it, bro. It definitely had it. The intros were hard. Everything was cool. Every year I, like, buy something from my childhood just to feel like a kid again, in a way. What was the question? The question was, uh, okay, so a kid coming out of high school right now and he's an artist at heart and doesn't oh, but know he what think to he do. Gotta go to, he thinks he has to go to school. Some shit like that. Honestly... You just gotta, like I said, get in that field, whatever that means to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just gotta, you know, if you wanna make clothes, then make clothes. It's really that easy. I know it sounds really hard, cause I was there too, and it took me a while to even get my shit going, but you just do it. Like, Google, man. Google is your biggest tool. I mean, I remember the first time I ever made shirts. Where can I get shirts made in Houston? Oh, okay, cool. Here's a place. Oh. Hey, how much for 50 shirts? Okay, boom, it's $800. All right, boom, get handed $100. Make the shirts. Yeah. There you go. Oh, like, is Google, it that easy? Google and YouTube is come on university. Like, is YouTube university, Google university. I'm not saying don't go to college. We went to Google feel, university, Yeah, man. like, if you, <laughs> if you feel like going to college will be helpful for your craft, that's cool. Like, you could go to some of these art schools, and they're taught by a lot of the teachers in those art schools are, like, those people used to be in the field and you can make a lot of connections through there so even if you go for a year or two boom take what you need and leave or go the whole time but at the end of the day you can always go back to college so if that shit doesn't feel like it's going to fulfill you right now step back focus on your shit i think that's the other thing too people be like i don't want to go to college and then they're like but i don't know what to do so they don't do nothing so get it's like, in that field bro yeah just get in the field or use college to keep that discipline and keep that workflow 
But if if that shit's not gonna make you happy, get in that field. Like it's think about skateboarding, right? All right, you give me a skateboard, right? I'm not gonna know shit. But if I put time into it and I, you know, practice, I'll be able to do some. It's the same. You can apply that with anything. Photography. You do, it's like you go to a you skate just, park. You're gonna pick up things as you do stuff, and that's where you learn. Like that's where like I got people right now who are in film school who hit me up like yo like, and I'm like I I kind of want to be in film school low key. But at the same time, like, self-taught, you, you can just self-teach yourself, man, with anything. You just got to keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you make a shirt a hundred times and you hang it up on the wall, each time I bet there's just something that you're going to just add or, like, mm -hmm. no, you and you can see the shit. progress. Like, yeah. really think about that. Really think about that. It's like, like he said, bro, if he pick up a skateboard, he doesn't know what to do. Where is he going to go to a skate park to be around people that... You, you doing that me? so like just insert yourself into the places that you know people are gonna be like there's get, get always a job a somewhere that is yeah. with what you want to do like okay you want to make shirts get a job at a you know at a screen printing factory like or why are you working shop, at like, starbucks yeah unless you want to make coffee you know what i'm saying if you want to like you know the importance of community is also yes very you know what i'm saying this yes. man is a firm firm believer in that because like yes. how we got brought up is just by people like bringing young kids in to progress this shit but i just left his crib before we came over here he got three kids sleeping on his couch just just to be around and letting them like soak game every day just being around him and gang and just like that's what's really going to progress the industry and what we love is not like gate like gatekeeping and sitting back and and just you know being stiff on everybody like you gotta have what it takes to like I've had a lot of people like I've brought a lot of people in and a lot of the times like the relationship turned sour just because of how they thought things were gonna go which is you know I'm not gonna directly sit you down and teach you something you know what I'm saying I might give you uh, tips here and there but like you know you just gotta watch observe and just apply that to your shit like okay cool I'm taking, you know, my guys to my factories. You're seeing where I'm getting shit made at. You're, you're meeting these people, you know, like, you gotta, I can't do nothing for nobody. You know what I'm saying? I could be the sun, but you gotta be the seed and you gotta water that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's like, it's just, you know, also expecting things, you know, if you don't have expectations, you don't get disappointed. Mm. You know? My dad used to say that all the time. He said, expectations lead to resentments. You know, and that's and true. A lot of, people that I have worked with they just didn't understand and like anything that they're doing I did too man what like bro I had to put in that work man like it wasn't just handed it like, to me and I just like okay cool everything's fine no like everyone's like first of all everyone thinks that I made it right and to a certain degree like I feel like that too but I'm still making it right now but like, the journey's the best part like the climb is the best fucking That's part hard, of the like, whole game bro when you get there what are you gonna do after that bro like we're so young like what am i supposed to be like 25 and everything's already done no but like, that's we going back to the internet conversation that is like the cruelness of the internet it's like people see that they're like they want instant gratification like everything is so fast paced now it's like yo i'm it's still like making your old kids right upset now. that they're not on bro 17 what i gotta think about when i'm 40 if i do make it to 40 like this shit it's got to out. Has to work out, but yes. it's going to work out. Like, I'm going to do. It's like we gotta train ourselves to be in the moment more. You know, like that stuff. Yes. When you do that, you're living for real. Bro, that's when like living in the moment. That's when like I think I really was just settled within myself as a human being. Is like okay, whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen. This shit is already laid out. This is like what I don't I regret believe. nothing. And it's just like. This shit is already written for me. Whatever's gonna Fate, happen is gonna happen. Whatever's happened has happened. I can't trip about shit. No matter what, I've always been taken care of by something, somebody. And as long as I stay on my path and stay determined and just stay the course that I know is destined for me and I keep believing in that, I have nothing to worry about. I think a lot of people, like, they, like I said, they just sit on the phone all day and they're like, damn, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not him, I'm not that. Like, you're you, bro you're you for a reason and once you find out like why you are you for that reason mm. 
Brotherhood with Cardi. Um, it's it's interesting, really. Um, you know, bro, just did Rolling Loud this weekend, and like obviously that was one of the best shows, like one of his best shows and the best show of Rolling Loud. But you know, the whole time all I was thinking about was you know I paid I went to his first show in Houston, you know what I'm saying, and I just you know even before I started working with him I was just seeing his biggest moments like LV him walking for LV you know sh like just everything that he was doing I just felt like I was winning too you know every time he won I won and just to see that like yeah like he really he really got it that's really my brother and I'm just happy to you know be a part of this shit for real like cause it's us for real it's us my brother Herbert Cardi like it's only been three years since I locked in with him but it's really thanks to Phoenix. Like, me and Phoenix locked in heavy during quarantine. We was getting Airbnbs, like, with my girl and all her friends just going crazy. Crazy. And, and that was open. Like, we was just raging, plotting, scheming, like, just progressing ourselves and the shit that we love to do. And shortly after that, like, when a whole lot of red dropped, um, I had DM'd Cardi just on some, like, yo, I fuck with you, bro. The album is amazing. Like, just about to change the world. Just happy to be alive when this shit is out you know, hit me back a few days later probably after talking with phoenix and and we linked up and and it just really has like become my brother um i think he's he was just raised on the importance of family um he knows how to take care of his family he knows how to lead his family he's got southern hospitality in him so you know like he's very open and welcoming um yeah man Cardi's just a very special human being very special like yeah just nothing bigger than that oh man nah bro and just watching him be a dad like that when 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 Onyx was born and watching the man Cardi became being a father I think was just like that was just the most fulfilling thing for me to see as his brother is like man this guy is really really just he's got a lot on his plate man he just yeah. make it work you know what I'm saying goes hard and for the family man i think uh i think i've been there like three times and uh each time i feel like a fever dream honestly just like yeah, for real you just you know i remember i lost a camera one time right i lost a camera i left it outside a store i didn't even realize i lost it till like a couple hours later and then i was like trying to backtrack everywhere that i went and um the next day I went and looked and it was in the exact same fucking spot right there, outside. Bro. Nobody touched it. Nobody stole right it. There. I had some shit on that camera too. And just like right there. They just they got it down over there, man. You know what I'm saying? They they work hard, they party hard. It's beautiful. There's no trash. You don't have to like, like I said, you don't have to worry about city in the world, bro. Beautiful, good fashion. Strip clubs are butt. But <laughs> still fun. You know it's saying? fun, bro. Tokyo is just I think that's like for any creative out there if you got if you got a chance to if you're working a nine to five right now save your money up just to go to Tokyo not even to go out there and like get some work or nothing but just go out there to get inspired bro just traveling beyond bro. creativity too just as a human being like you will be changed as a human being being in Tokyo the Japanese bro they are just the humanitarian levels that they're on are just exceed and surpass America by like light years like he said bro he lost a whole camera I know people that lost their whole bags whole wallets in the street I can leave the camera right here you could go back seconds, yeah it's, it's gone. gone it's and gone over there that should be in the same spot or they'll move it like in a safer spot for you so Maybe it don't get damaged you. like you know what I'm saying like and everybody's fit is on point everybody can dress everybody cares about like not even like the the brands that they wear but just the silhouette of they what they're together, wearing man. yes like the trains are clean as shit the subways out here are mad dirty they like, party hard bro and they rage Shibuya meltdown look drink, bro. yes Shibuya meltdown i was almost on there bro <laughs> almost fucked up woke up bro got a camera in my face fuck but it's all good though yo Shibuya yeah. meltdown is one of the best instagram accounts out okay but honestly traveling though just in general yeah you know what i'm saying i know a lot of people i was i lived in my hometown until I moved here. I didn't go nowhere else. I think I went to like California a couple of times, but traveling is very important. Very. Because I already said this one time, but you're like a goldfish in a bowl. You gotta you get out of your bubble. You gotta mm -hmm. go to the ocean. You gotta see what's out there, man. Like, 
that's how you really get inspired, you know what I'm saying? Get a group of your friends, get a van, one of them's got a car, get a friend with a car and just go somewhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I used to go to White Sands, New Mexico. I used to drive 14 hours to do nothing. Yeah, but my boys at high school, the time. Right? we used to drive to Florida. That was like 16 hours from VA. And we ain't got no plans. We just going out there to party, but it's like, we got to get Probably the fuck no out money of our, either. Yeah, hell no, $100, We collectively bro. all got like $400. <laughs> yeah, like, enough for gas there to gas back. You know what I'm saying? We got to figure it out. That's how rest. you learn finesse, too. Mm -hmm. And how to maneuver. And, and just like, how to hustle, like. How to hustle, man. And just, just do it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are scared, but what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. That's just getting out of your comfort zone, too. I feel like yeah, people just, zone, yeah. they just so content. And, and they're like, why would I go there? Like, why would I get like I'm, I'm good right here. Why would I go over there? Oh, my mom won't let yeah, me. Like, Fuck that. Bro. Your mom will get over it. Bro. Bro. You're not gonna be grounded for life. Just don't be smart though. Over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't be stupid. Yeah, don't be. Don't like. You know what I mean? Don't go nowhere by yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless you're like older. But yeah, get a group of your friends and just go somewhere cool, bro. And just you know what I'm saying, keep doing that. Just like experience some shit. Keep doing that, man. Um, well, do this one. This is like the most painful tattoo I have out of everything on my body. Just the most painful tattoo. And it's a Grim Reaper in my palm. And that stands for like that death is in my hands. My death is in my hands. Um, I died in 2010. It's like the year I lost my brother. 13, that's my family's lucky number. Like my grandfather's birthday. He used to be a NASCAR driver. So that was his number. Dream but don't sleep. That's like me and Lamar shit, no more dreams, that's the motto. Um, got the Mickey, with the A, that's my homage to Vivian Westwood, like first life is war graphic. I got this one, the live forever one, by the homie Mez. Um, that's gonna be some next life is war graphic. This one is like skull, a knife and a rose, it's like um, kill for love. And then we got life is war in the back. Go. Iconic. Yeah. Is that is that blood? Yeah, I oh, clip my shit shaving or I sliced my head shaving today. I had a new razor. I was too excited. What about the dragon, man? The it's dragon. I got this one in Tokyo, 2019. This was like, this was like, um, kind of when I knew I'd already had these two pieces, but this was right after I had just kind of done my biggest deal for this brand that I was working with at the time and. We was about to move to Tokyo for three months and build this whole collection, do a runway show, which we did. I got to walk the show. Um, so that was kind of my testament to Bug. that. You feel me? Yeah. Rose on the Vogue. Yeah. yeah, he's a real oh, model. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he's then a real uh, model. But the dragon, that's like, um, if you look at like Chinese Zodiac, the dragon is like my secret friend within within the Zodiac, Chinese Zodiac. Can we I got one right here on my eye. That's my favorite one. Okay. Say Joy. I got that in Japan for free, you feel me? And then I got one under my jaw. I hate saying it, I'm not gonna tell you what it says, but it's a quote from Lost, which is one of my favorite TV shows ever. Literally, when I was talking about fate earlier, that was a quote from Lost. Oh, for real? Yeah, the, there's no such thing as a coincidence. People you know, think that, you know, it's fate. You know what I'm saying? Everything happens for a reason. That show Lost, watch it. I got this right here. I got Hope Sandoval's name tatted on me. If you know, you know. She's a go. Please hit me up. Um, I got these tattoos. My dad has the exact same oh, ones in the exact same spots, and he designed them too. So, you know, I had to show love. I love my dad. Um, got my mom's name tattooed right here. Shout out to her. Um, yeah, got the gang tat right here. I got my ex girlfriend's name. <laughs> I told him not to get that shit too. Real, real quick. Hey. Don't ever get. Your significant other tatted, bro. I swear to God, that's bad luck. Matching tattoos listen, and and significant other tattoos, <laughs> bad luck, bro. That's a lie, though, because honestly, I can cover this up, and I'm never going to cover this up, because this just reminds me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got a problem with nobody. You know who I've ever been with? Like, we on good terms. And I love this girl. And then I got this one for another girl. <laughs> Still love her, too. Um, there was, there was lessons in that love, I'll say. I might get... Her name tatted on me. We're not even cool right now. I still want to get her like That's name fine. tatted on me. Just on yeah. some crazy shit. There was lessons. I'm really wild like that. Like I it. don't really care. You know what I'm saying? And then I got this big ass Killjoy tat. It's actually my new no, brand that name. Shit hurt. Yeah, she was biting, bro. She no, was that biting. shit hurt. But it's my new brand name, and just like there's so many 
meanings into it. I could go into it like just last year was crazy. Look up Killjoy. It's like, you know, but that's not what I'm on though. But um and I got this one. I got this one when I made a hundred grand. Like the day I made a hundred bands, first year in LA too. Like I came to LA with a hundred dollars and once I, I, mean, I didn't have 100 bands like right here, but like my brand, once I had 100 bands, yeah, this girl actually, I remember she broke up with me when I was working at Jamba Juice. She was like, all you do is smoke and hang out with your friends. <laughs> and you feel me? I just, this is what was, how I'm feeling that day. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes like- Yeah, bitch, what about now? I actually just talked to her last week. For real? Yeah, she's That's cool. cool. I love all, all the girls I've been with, man. Cause they, you know what I'm saying? You leave with something. I always left with something. I can't do that. You know and I hope they, them too. No, not everything is forever, man. I'm not built like that, bro. I'm built like that. I'm about yeah. to get a girl named Tammy tomorrow. I'm probably about to get this one right here. Different name? Different, Different name. All right, all right. Just like, just have it going like symmetrical. Cause I got these hoes too, you know what I'm saying? And it's so funny, it says show don't, but to me it says don't show. Like what I said earlier about don't show in your hands, like just, you know, yeah, don't show your hand, bro. Just keep this shit, you know. What is the most romantic thing you've ever done? Most romantic thing I've ever done was this girl. She actually used to live over here on 7th. Um, I was at her crib and we were on her balcony and I was just looking around and I see this blank wall that she could see. And I had a one of my graffiti homies go over there and leave a message. And I didn't tell her, and she just woke up one day and seen it. I think it said, uh, I think about you only. With like an uh, exclamation point and a heart. There's a lot of things. <laughs> That's hard. Damn, That's a yeah, story. I'm man. running through them, but I'm really a romantic oh, man. I think one of the most romantic things I did is my girl, she like. Your context. She be doing romantic like, things for him. Yeah, we got a lighter. We, yeah, she got to be giving me custom lighters with pictures on them and shit so I don't lose them. Like, we doing <laughs> mad cute shit for each other, but I think... He's like, had that shit for like two years, bro. Anytime facts. I ever use it, he's like, I need that back right now. <laughs> yeah, right, right now. now like, <laughs> right now. Um, I think one of the most ra romantic things I did is she has this, uh, this pun calendar with all these like cute little drawings on them um, by this girl. I think her name's Julie... Uh, the brand is called Rock Doodle. So she's obsessed with this calendar and every day is like a new pun. It's mad cute. But I hit up Rock Doodle directly and I had Shorty make my girl like a Lauren pun book for her. So it was like 10 pages of just like a day in her life. I think that's like one of the craziest gifts that she got geeked out over. And then like um, I got her like a little tiger chain for her birthday last year with some rubies in it, red rubies, because it was her zodiac year last year. Uh, she's Chinese too, so yeah, it was that. Um, yeah, I got a list of shit, bro. I got it like a big ass, huge, I got a list, bro. I'm huge Hello about... Kitty neon sign in her crib. A list. Big one, custom. We're going hard, I'm a romantic for real. I, just I like know what you like, shit that I'm, I'm gonna get I know it done. nobody's gonna do. Yes, like, exactly. I'm, exactly. She's always gonna remember that and just, Hell yeah, bro. My boy Messiah taught me that shit in high school. You got to do things for girls so no matter what happens, they'll never forget you. Ever. You feel me? Ever, like, bro. Yeah, you can get But that's not why I do it. I do it because I love my girl, but I'm Absolutely. just saying. Like, I'm going to make I sure did, I wanted to do it. no other saying? guy is going to do what I did for you. Ever. That's love. That's love. I like girls who don't like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate when girls are like, all about me type shit like I like girls who just do like their own shit and like, like will make time chase. for me yeah I like, I like the chase I don't you know and it's so funny I like girls that don't like me and I don't like girls who like me so I'm just stuck with like yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's interesting mm, I think I like girls with attitude like when I met my girl now like she wasn't even t speaking to me like she was stiff in the corner, like just on her own shit, like didn't want nothing with nobody. And now it's on some shit. Like I see the full her and I look, and she's so different than that person. But I'm like, wow, fuck with that. Like you just don't want nothing to do with nobody. Like until they prove themselves to you, which I really respect. Yeah. 
And like five months before I met her, I DM'd her. And she dubbed my DM. Red. Not even, even open it? She didn't even open, open that it. shit, bro. Didn't even open it. Message to the youth, bro. Be aware of everything. You know what I'm saying? The universe, everything, people, how you treat people. I'm saying, don't cause anybody harm. Like, just try to be the best that you can be, you know? Because I don't know about y'all, but I got some issues that I'm still figuring out, still working out. And I got a lifetime to figure out, you know what I'm saying? But just make sure that you're progressing. Make sure that, you know, you're not stagnant, you know, emotionally, mindset, you know, outside world. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're leaving something behind. Just make sure you don't tarnish that and just make sure, you know, it's inspiring. You gotta reach one, teach one. The cycle repeats, man. My message to the youth is let patience be your best friend. Because, you know, I said it before and I say it all the time. You sit on that phone all day watching everybody else. It's going to fuck with you and it's going to throw you off and you're going to feel like you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I swear, if you just keep all that noise to a minimum and use that noise as motivation and not comparison and you stay patient, at some point in time it is inevitable that what you want to do will happen. And use the people around you, use your resources, don't be a reclusive and man, like don't do what's working for the people above you because that's what's working right now. If you're coming up under us, you don't see us doing what people above us did. So if you got to be on some whole new shit that we are going to look at and be like, that kid is fucking inspiring me. You feel me? He and reminded that, me of myself yes, when I was like, coming up. That is the and shit that's, that's going to keep around, this I keep shit, shit going. Like that. You know like, what I'm saying? Just stay patient, real. bro. Just stay patient. I'm telling stay you. Stay patient. Like, Keep people want to give up people want to you know try to switch their whole shit up because it's not clicking that shit you just keep driving your shit down people's throats bro that is what's gonna help you fucking win just stay fucking patient and post that's one thing y'all kids don't be doing but i be seeing all a lot of y'all in our dms and you got private accounts and you got zero posts. You got zero posts like what bro you about to be running shit up every single fucking day just because we don't be posting that often because we giving it we giving it to y'all to post to get to the point of not posting you got to post your ass off i used to post two three times a week he used to post every single fucking day i used to post every single He's fucking going day. live every day yes like, bro think. like show the world what you're doing show the world what you got and if you don't got nothing do something and throw that shit up who fucking cares how many likes you're gonna get you could dead ass turn the likes off post some shit and progress the fucking game don't try to be too cool for nobody when you don't even have nothing to be too cool about. That's what I'm tired of seeing. That's what I'm messing to you. Stay patient and post everything. Never give up, man. Giving Facts. up is a luxury that I can't afford. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Montreati, man. I've been wanting to do this interview for a long time. Um, I feel like the questions they ask, they're good questions. You know what I'm saying? But like, I feel like y'all know more about me now or we'll just have a little bit more insight of something. And that's why I did this interview so yes. that you guys can watch it so that you guys could take something from it so that you guys could, you know, one day come up to me and be like a boss and be like, yo, I watch that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's why I did this. Yeah, bro. Shout out Montreal. We really do this shit for the bro. kids, man. Shout, Shout out, out to Montreal. Harrison. We really do this shit for the kids, Y'all really care about the youth and the progressiveness of this whole culture y'all don't y'all not montreality is not on no clout shit i'm saying it right now montreality is not on no clout shit they are here to really get to know us and what we really care about what we're built on how we move how we think not about what we do it's about who we are and not what we do and i respect the hell out of that Shouts out montreality. That, montreality show never been about the camera ever literally uh, it's always about you and your subject um i can do amazing things with a disposable camera it's not about like the actual equipment that you're using